Chair, committee members, thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning. My name is Blake Allison. I'm a 13-year resident of Lyme. I'm proud of that. I lived for 30 plus years in the metro Boston area. I'm in favor of New Hampshire's death penalty, repealing New Hampshire's death penalty, and urge members of, of the state senate to vote yes on HB 454. Regrettably, I know firsthand the searing trauma of losing a loved one to violent crime. My late wife, Anna S.W. Allison, was murdered in the September 11 attacks. She was a passenger on American Airlines Flight 11 that was flown into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. Despite the horror of that event, I never considered an eye for eye retribution for its perpetrators. I'm a longtime opponent of the death penalty dating back to my young adulthood. That belief is not situational. Just because I suffered great and deep emotional hurt, I would not then, and will not now, waver in my conviction that taking a person's life in the name of another is wrong. Governor Sununu, in vetoing last year's death penalty repeal approved by the state legislature, argued that the death penalty was necessary to stand with crime victims to ensure justice is served. But as my presence before you and the testimony of other crime victims attest, not all of us share this view that justice can be served only through violent retribution. The idea that imposing the death penalty brings some kind of closure to the families of the victims leaves unaddressed the deep emotional suffering they have had and will continue to endure. On the 10th anniversary of these September 11 attacks, I was invited to represent the families of Massachusetts 9-11 victims at an annual <coughs> gathering at Boston's Garden of Peace, a memorial to victims of homicide. According to its mission statement, the Garden is to be a symbol of hope and peace and for renewal in our lives, our community, and the world. Sitting with the other speakers, looking at, at the assembled crowd, I was struck by how many stories of loss, pain, and trauma were in front of me. As a member of the Massachusetts 9-11 families, I had been privileged from the beginning to benefit from a large support network that helped address a wide range of emotional and practical needs aimed at helping me to recover and heal. I wondered what recovery support, if any, these families sitting before me received. Wouldn't they be better served by a system of justice whose resources provided help and recovery and healing rather than putting violence upon violence? I appear, appear before you this morning as living proof of the possibility there could be another way forward that provided both justice and healing. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you for being here. Other questions? Seeing none, thank you. 